Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about a very interesting article written by a bassoonist in 1780, which contains an especially important section explaining how a bassoonist should accompany the voice. So, are you ready for this? <gasps> ah, you thought it was coming, didn't you? But... <laughs> In his 1780 essay on music, Jean Benjamin de la Bolle includes an article on the bassoon, written by Pierre Cugnier, who was born in Paris probably around 1740. In the same essay appears Cugnier's biography, and we can glean quite a bit about him. At the time of publication, Cugnier was first bassoon at the Académie Royale de Musique and was a very well-regarded bassoonist who fell in, in a sense, into professional music making. From the age of 6 to 18, he was a choir boy in the Paris Cathedral Choir. When he was 14, he discovered the bassoon, and his talents were so promising that he was given instruction by the chapel's music director. Although Cugnier showed promise, he continued his regular studies until a parent died, apparently ending a hope to earn an honest living. He soon ended up in the service of the secretary to a fermier général, or tax collector, who had a taste for music. In 1762, he lost his position during a reformation to the fermier général system. The next year, he bolstered the bassoon section of the Musique du Roi in concerts at Fontainebleau. Interesting to note here that in the biography, the author says that Cugnier was added to this orchestra because there were only two bassoons in the Musique du Roi at the time only two. In December 6, 1764, Cugnier got a place in the opera orchestra and was soon promoted to being in the first accompanying group, or premier accompagnement. From 1778, he was promoted to first bassoon in the opera and was clearly well respected by his peers as the author compliments him on many occasions. Finally, the biography offers an interesting observation on Cugnier's choices and abilities as a player. Never has he wanted to play alone in public. He is convinced that though he has great talent on the bassoon, the instrument will never please an audience as well as the violin, the flute, the oboe, and the cello. Moreover, it is so tiring to play solos that it can only harm the equality of sound that's required for accompaniment. I think what he's trying to say at the end there is that it's, it's too hard to play a concerto and then play the rest of the concert in the orchestra or continue a group at the high standards that he was setting for himself. Anyway, let's keep going. His modesty in this regard is commendable. The public must be grateful that he hasn't done what so many others have, since his unique motivation has pleased them through a genre which so many musicians don't appreciate enough. That is, in accompaniment, I can assure you that few persons have pushed this talent as far as Monsieur Cugnier, and that his name should be placed in the ranks of the first musicians. Cugnier's article on the bassoon in La Bolle's essay is very comprehensive. It's 20 pages long and contains both a diagram of the instrument as well as a comprehensive fingering chart for a five-keyed bassoon, which runs from low B-flat, of course, to a super high F at the top of the treble clef. Staff. Yeah, that high F. Some of Cugnier's introduction is worth mentioning here. The bassoon is used to play bass lines like the cello and the double bass. It produces a sound which, due to the particular timbre produced by the reed, projects the sound of other instruments which the bassoon blends to great effect in certain musical phrases. For this reason, it is used in every orchestra. Independent of this property, the bassoon has another essential role. Because its sound is analogous with that of the human voice, it is very appropriate to accompany the voice, especially the bass tie, or low tenor or baritone, with which it shares more characteristics than the other voices. It is also used to great effect in the genre of music that the Germans call harmonie musique, which is music for an ensemble of two clarinets, two horns, and two bassoons. It is also useful to accompany pieces of music arranged for the harp. Finally, speaking from experience, this instrument has been developed to a point which, if not to perfection, at least is possible to use in almost all of the genres of music which are performed today. It would suffice to listen to a performance of a virtuoso like 
M.M. Jardin, Schubert, Ritter, and a few others to be persuaded that this instrument is good enough to play concertos and other types of music. Interesting here that Cugnier leans in when talking about accompanying the voice. It's just as important as an accompanying instrument as it is in the continuo section. The bulk of the treatise explains how the instrument is built. There are some rather esoteric details about reeds as well as the vocal. There's an interesting section with passages exemplifying what is hard to execute on the bassoon, as well as a list of trills which are possible on the instrument and another of trills which are not possible. The last section on the stroke of the tongue is the golden goose. When accompanying the voice, if it is a line that accompanies the words of the voice note for note, one must translate that language as closely as possible from the voice to the instrument by well observing the short and long syllables. For the type of accompaniment, especially in expressive moments, the sound of the instrument must be focused in a way that it bases itself within the voice, and the tongue must be softened to mimic the syllables which are produced by the voice. Cugnier then gives us two extracts from opera arias where the bassoon doubles the vocal line and explains that the line must out of necessity be performed like it would be spoken. The accompanist also imitates the different inflections of the singer, the coulée, the port de voix, cadence brisée, and other agremens, without which the two voices, the bassoon and the singer, would give an unpleasant effect. In a word, wind instruments were invented to imitate the voice. They must sing as well when they accompany a voice. This kind of accompaniment is much harder than it seems since it looks so simple. One must trust in the embouchure and know well the fingerings of the instrument to execute the agrément that they sing. So accompanying the voice as a bassoonist is an art in and of itself. Clearly the more theoretical concept of articulation codified by Hauteter and added upon by Quance didn't apply. And a link to that video is in the cards and below. One has to try actually to articulate in the strictest sense as if to speak in the words of the singer on the bassoon. Imagine the kind of skill Cugnier must have acquired in order to be recognized by his peers, since the art of accompanying a soloist more often than not requires the accompanist to focus the listener's attention towards the soloist and not to themselves. <laughs> Somehow Cugnier could not only replicate the articulations of the language, but also the characteristics of the voice while executing the ornaments of the soloist in exactly the same manner. <laughs> that last bit is hard to imagine today when almost every prof in every professional setting there is a Chinese wall separating orchestra members and soloists. Obviously, the praise Cugnier receives as an accompanist came not only from skill, but also from much experience rehearsing and performing with particular singers. I'm just going to add off the cuff here that when Cugnier is talking about knowing the fingerings, I think he's talking about extended fingering technique, so that in order to execute the uh, ornaments or agrément, along following the singer he's actually saying you know sometimes you have to manipulate the quality of sound in the bassoon in order to exactly follow those small detailed ornaments um, so it's a, it's an extended technique thing not just you know you have to know the basic fingerings of the bassoon well that's it for me today if you like these videos and want to support them then please consider becoming a patron via patreon and don't forget to like on youtube share and subscribe. So thanks for watching and take it easy. Bye for now.